Okay, we're back. We're live. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, 2 o'clock, and that means it's here in Hawaii, the state of health. We are a healthy state, but you have to work to be a healthy state. It doesn't come naturally. And I have with me uh, Amy morton Sogi. Uh, she's a contract coordinator for the State Department of Health. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about generating contracts at the State Department of Health. And uh, I'll tell you her secret. She's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Amy. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, so we have contracts. And I, I don't think people fully understand how this works. But state agencies, especially the Department of Health, with 3,000 employees and a huge budget, including not only state funds but federal funds, uh, hires a lot of people. It buys a lot of stuff. It has contracts going in every direction. So it needs contract coordination. That's, you, that's your job, yeah? Right, right. So tell us about the contracts. I mean, give us the whole parameter. I mean, what the array of contracts that you deal with. Okay, so we do uh, health and human services contracts, which are 103F contracts, and contracts for goods and services. So since we have uh, three main administrations within the Department of Health, the Behavioral Health Administration, Environmental Health Administration, and Health Resources Administration, we do a very wide range of different kinds of contracts. So behavioral health, you'll see a lot of things like um, specialized residential services, um, services for psychiatric care. Environmental, you'll see a very different range, of course, of um, services there. And then the health resources, you'll see um, resources you know, geared towards family. We have some contracts for primary care services as well. So we run a very large um, range of the types of contracts that we do there, as well as the different types of funding. So we have some um, which are funded with state general funds, as well as uh, many contracts that are funded with federal grant funds as well. Mm, okay, this is formidable, actually. Yes. A lot of money, yes. you know, and government always has to be accountable, and uh, we're embarrassed, one or the other. <laughs> if you're not accountable, <laughs> then you're embarrassed. Uh, and the idea is to deal with all these different disparate situations and somehow make a, a contract system that will deal with all of those issues, all of those parties, all of those types, types of, of hirings and engagements. So um, not all contracts are the same, right? They're all different, right? Right, right. So that's even scarier because you have to make sure the right contract gets on the right job. Yes, yes. So that was one of the things that we wanted to look at with creating a standardized system, which we have named Contract Genie. It's a web-based software G -E -N -I -E. application. G-E-N-I-E. Yes. And it really is a takeoff on the word generator, Gen right. generating contracts. Yes, okay. so we thought Genie was a much more fun name yeah, than just is, Contract sure. Generator. It's kind of boring. So uh, we created um, this contracts genie. So it's a web-based application. So you would um, access it through your um, internet browser. And it was designed to really create standardized contract forms within the department. So all of the forms that you would need for a certain contract type and all of the required language, which comes from the Attorney General's office and the Administrative Services office, are preloaded into the system. So now the user doesn't need to go and find which is the right form for this type of contract, what language is required, what are the insurance requirements. All of that is included in the system. So um, the user just logs on. It's a question-based uh, user interface. It's kind of modeled after the idea of TurboTax. So they just see a series of questions. It's about 30 questions or so. They um, fill in their answers, and those automatically um, auto-populate all of the contract forms. And then once all the contract provisions. So right. it's actually going to draft a page of text for you. Yes. It and will. it's going to have all the kind of all the integrated right. with the right pronouns and everything and paragraph numbers. And it does all of the paragraph numbers. It pulls in all the right forms. So there are about uh, nine forms or so that are included with each contract, including things like um, the notary page, our general conditions, which come from the attorney general's office. It also will include um, exhibits and attachments to the contract. So you just answer these you know, 30 questions, which is really rather quick. Yeah. And um, you hit generate contract, it creates a contract PDF packet. Okay, so we're going to talk about the experience. We're going to have a case study now, Amy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, let's see, I want the state of Hawaii to engage me as a foster parent. Okay. I'm making that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I guess the first thing is I have to have a license. Right. Be a foster yeah. parent. Do I get my license before I go to the genie or after? That would all happen at the beginning portion, so that would all happen with procurement. So usually we would put out an, a request for proposals, and at that point, um, you as a provider could submit your proposal. Uh, we go through an evaluation and award process. 
you would get your award letter, and then that's the point when the contract genie really um, takes over okay, and so would create the contract I, document. I refer to it as a license, but it's really an award letter. Yes. And you told me that I qualify. And right. It's not only that I'm good enough, but that there's room for me. Right. right? That you, you have the, the funds and mm -hmm. the, the space for me in your program. Yes. And that's why the RFP. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then I get that letter, and I go to the browser, and I go to the Department of Health Genie page. Actually, the um, contract genie is for internal use. Oh. So you as a provider are not going to need to see it. Oh, I never see it then. No. This is all inside. This is all internal. Okay, so if I misled anyone, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so it'll be one of the staff members mm -hmm. in the State Department of yeah. Health. And I take it that a lot of staff members would have would be using the genie right because there's a lot of different functions and it runs from one department to another mm -hmm. so this has got to service everyone who's writing contracts right, right. so there are um, contract specialists usually within each division or office within the department so each of them would then get a, a unique username and log on for the system and they would input all of your provider information into that system so we're having a conversation on the phone right am i on the phone i'm i'm still looking for a foster care contract, right. right? So you submit all of your um, like provider information with yeah. your RFP, yeah. and then as the uh, staff member, I would pull up Contract Genie and then enter that in. So like yeah. things like we your legal name. You don't have to name. be on the phone. No, you no. can look at my documents and yes. you can answer the 30 questions right. from my documents. Yes. Okay, all right. So you put in the thir 30 answers, mm -hmm. takes five minutes, Depending if you have all of the information available already. If then I don't, I'm not going to be able to finish, right? You are I mean, not going to be able to finish. Write, write to this guy, write to me again and say, mm -hmm. uh, I need more. Right. You okay, can but once I have it all, mm -hmm. then I can fill out the 30 questions pretty quickly. Yes. And immediately, just push a button and There's I have a contract. PDF. Yes, the okay. entire contract is ready. The whole, everything, all the attachments, all the ifs, ands, and buts, they're all there. Right. So you have the opportunity to upload all your attachments. You can upload all of your exhibits and then anything else that needs to be attached to the contract. So things like the Providers Hawaii Compliance Express Certificate and any other um, your requirements that oh, either... Oh, compliance, yeah. Yes. Can we talk about Compliance Express? How is that connected? Uh, I, we haven't explained this, but in order to have a contract with the state of Hawaii, you have to go to the Compliance Express. Right. And I know this because we have contracts with the state of Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you, and it will it will tell you uh, whether you're kosher uh, mm -hmm. with the state tax department and, when, and any right. other department right. that might have cognizance over what mm -hmm. you do in, in business. So I have to. So who goes there? Does this program go there, or do I have to go there? The staff will have to go there. Right now, it's not directly integrated into Hawaii Compliance Express, but we do have a link directly to it in Contract Genie. So we try to include as many things as possible uh, for the users to make it very simple. One-stop shop. Yes. So when you log into Contract Genie, at the very top of the homepage, there's a link that says Hawaii Compliance Express. You just click that. It takes you right to the homepage for Hawaii okay, Compliance but Express. Okay, that's your people, not my people, right? Right. Still. Yes. You, your people are going to check the compliance with state laws right. and tax and all that. Yes. I don't, I don't have to do that, right. which is a blessing. You just have to make sure you're compliant to pay yeah. your taxes. Well, <laughs> yeah. Right. But you have to go do it, you know. Yes. And, and this is, it takes time, and you've got to figure out where it is mm -hmm. and what it means and all that. So, but anyway, so, and they say express, it actually really is express, but you've got to find it first. Right. Um, okay, so now this, this staff member... Mm -hmm. um, has the whole contract, uh, maybe even including, uh, as a side point, the uh, Compliance Express. Right. And it's all there. It's all mm -hmm. there. It's on the screen. Right. What happens? At that point, then, they would um, print it out and then send it for review through in, our in administrative services office and attorney general's office. That's something we're working on. Right now, we're still doing it as a hard copy, but we're looking at doing an electronic review process as well. So we're kind of moving in phases. Uh, part of this entire um, contracts process improvement uh, project that we're doing is to uh, move to electronic process. So once it creates the PDF, we're hoping that then we would be able to upload that into a workflow, like maybe in SharePoint. So all of the review can happen online. Yeah. And then um, one of the other new initiatives that we're doing at the department is to do electronic distribution. So we actually have all of the contracts now electronically archived on a SharePoint site. And then instead of making paper copies within the department and for the providers, we're actually scanning it to the site. The, um, the staff member will get an email alert saying your contract is ready. And then they can email it to the provider directly from the site. 
so that we don't have to make as many paper copies. Okay, paper. I want to come back and talk more about that. Uh, you know, uh, when Sonny Bagualio took over, it must be, what, uh, five years ago, mm -hmm. four and a half years ago, right. as the, um, what was it, the uh, Office of Information Management, um, he made a report and found that the state government was completely fragmented mm -hmm. as far as computers were concerned. This doesn't sound fragmented. It sounds pretty good, and I want to know why mm -hmm. right after we come back. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Amy Morton Sogi. She's a contract coordinator at the State Department of Health here in Hawaii, the State of Health. And we're talking about generating contracts at the Department of Health. This is really, really important. It's the way they perform their functions to the community. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at Think Tech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m. to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad, learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming, consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out every Thursday. Aloha. Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Josh Green. I'm the host of a program called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'm a physician. I work in the emergency department on the Big Island. I also serve in the state senate, which please don't hold that against me, doesn't detract from my television program. We speak about all the big health care issues in the state. We get together on Tuesdays from 2 o'clock till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And we try to talk about the most important issues in health care. This is a terrific venue for people to learn about health care. There are many programs on this, on this station. We broadcast it later, uh, not just on the internet, but also on OC16. Thanks for joining us. Please be informed Healthcare continues. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here with Amy Morton Sogi. She's a contract uh, coordinator at the State Department of Health here in Hawaii, the State of Health. And we're talking about generating contracts at the Department of Labor. Contracts with you if you're dealing with the state. This is very important. There's a lot of money involved and a lot of services involved, and we have to do it right. And um, anyway, so I was saying, you know, back when when uh, Sonny Bagualia first came into office, he, found, he made a report, took him a while, and the report said, oh, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't sound like a mess with you, though. We're trying to uh, clean up some of those issues with this program. Uh, one of the reasons that we created it is because you know, we're looking at all of these different divisions doing contracts in a very different kind of way uh, as far as what their documents would look like and also their process as far as how it was being processed through the department. Um, because of all of these differences, we had an average of about 180 days or so to get a contract process, sometimes even up to nine months. That's six months. Oh, yes. yeah. oh wow. So wow. we wanted to find a way to make this a uh, faster process. So When you say 180 days or nine months mm -hmm. or whatever it was, um, you mean from the, from the time that the contract was supposed to, the process was supposed to start till the time the contract got signed, approved, and finished? Right, so the time that basically you got your award letter saying we're going to give you this contract to the time it actually gets executed yeah. so you can start your okay. work. Okay, and I guess we agree that's too long. Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how, you're making it shorter. How much shorter are you making it and how are you doing that? Uh, we've made it quite a bit shorter. We've had 30 contracts now processed uh, through Contract Genie. We've had an average now of about uh, 73 days, I believe, to get the contract process and a median of 57 days. And our shortest contracts have gotten through in 29 days. So we've seen big improvement from the 180 days that we've seen before. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it is now using the standardized uh, contract documents. The Genie. Yes, and the Contract Genie. It's taken a lot of the manual work out of drafting. There are certain parts of the contracts that I don't think people realize before that actually are typed on a typewriter. <laughs> so things like putting in the, um, the log numbers oh, sure. on the Filling bottom the of blanks. every page. Yes. Certain parts of them are form fillable PDFs, yeah. but if you have to include anything outside of those uh, fillable lines, they have to actually be typed on a typewriter. With Contract Genie now, you don't have to do any of that. It's all included uh, in the system. So it's been taking out a lot of the work in putting the contracts together. And it's also speeding up the review process, because now when somebody reviews a contract, they know that all of the required provisions are included in it, all of the correct forms have been used, and um, there aren't going to be a lot of kind of 
odd little clerical errors that we were seeing before, sure. like someone forgot to underline something, they didn't put this information on quite the right line. Right. But all of those things we've been seeing um, are solved now with the contract genius. Yeah, because you know exactly what you're going to get. Exa yes. Those yes. 30 questions will determine what it looks like, period. Right. So, but you said something that interested me, that, that the contract, once it's, um, once it's done, it's printed out, and then a printed copy goes to what, the Attorney General? Yeah, so first it goes through our administrative services office, and, and then it goes... what do they do? They do a review. They, um, you know, look for any kind of errors that are included in it. They also check the Certificate of Insurance and Hawaii Compliance Express okay. requirements. And then it goes to the Attorney General's office. But okay. one of the things that we're looking at doing with our new process, which hasn't been implemented yet, but we're working on, is doing a dual review process. So right now, everything's very linear. You know, it goes to ASO, administrative services. It goes to the attorney generals. It, it takes a while traveling and sitting on each person's desk. Because it's physical. Yes. It so can only be in one place at a exactly. time. Exactly. <laughs> so now we're looking at doing a dual review, where it would go to the administrative services office and the attorney general's office at the same time. And then they could focus their review on particular areas. So the administrative services office could focus more on fiscal issues, so looking at the budget. And the attorney generals could focus on the scope. Because most of the other areas are already um, pre-filled in by Contract Genie anyway. Yeah. Okay, so can I, can I ask you about the Attorney General now? Sure. <clears throat> I remember I served on a couple of boards back 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I found that every, every single meeting of every board had an Attorney General, Deputy Attorney General there. And I would always ask myself, am I paying for this? Do I really need, you know, and half the people on the board were attorneys anyway, right? Right. <laughs> well, what, do we really need? And it'd be a, the simplest thing, and an attorney general person would be there. Mm -hmm. and, oh, wow. And then if it was on the neighbor islands, the attorney general person would have to fly there. You know, I'd see the dollar signs with marching all over the place. Then I began to wonder whether the attorney general really needed to be there. And I'm wondering now whether the attorney general, you know, what, what exactly the attorney, because the system that you built with Genie is going to give pre-written provisions that have presumably already been approved by the Attorney General. Right. And the Attorney General would know how those 30 questions interact mm -hmm. to provide a final form of agreement. Why then, if you can't answer this, you know, just tell I me no. <laughs> Why then does the Attorney General have to look at it yet still again? The Attorney General's office really has to look at the scope of services because the scope of services is going to vary, um, you know, based on the type of contract that you have. And that's really the only part of Contract Genie that we cannot pre-write into the system because it's going to depend on, you know, the procurement that you put sure. out. So their focus then really is on the scope, making sure that there's no legal issues as far as what you procure. Why don't you send them an email? Pardon? Send them an email. <laughs> scope of services. You know, 50 words, 100 words, whatever, one page, whatever. They, they really want to see the, um, I guess the they full do. scope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and when you have the linear approach, then, mm -hmm. then the administrative services offer, officer is going to look at it, however long that takes, and then the attorney general is going to look at it as ad seriatim. And by the time it gets back, you could probably make a chart about how much of that 73 days or whatever, mm -hmm. how many days, 180 days, uh, was allocated to which part of the review. And mm -hmm. then you could say, well, I am the contract coordinator for the State Department of Health, and I am going to try to work that down. I'm going to try to work that down so we don't have anybody standing out with a 20 or 30 day period of, mm -hmm. of you know, back burner desk, right? right. I mean, that's part of your thing, isn't it? Right, right. Some of the outliers we see, though, are not necessarily with the review process. Sometimes the providers can't get the right insurance, have to go back to their insurance companies. Sometimes they're not correctly um, registered on the DCCA website, so we run into some of those issues as well, which slow it down on the um, provider end. But yet, we definitely have been looking at doing um, specific time frames for review. So, you know, if the Attorney General's office gets it, we would like to say, you know, seven days, and you have it back to us. You bug them. You bug them. At the end of seven days, <laughs> you pick up the phone and say, you know, you're holding on to that contract. Is everything okay down there? Uh, can you try to hustle a little bit? Do you ever do that? I have done that. Admit, contracts I've had to get out. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there, there ought to be a red light goes on anyway. <laughs> well, I, I'm interested in seeing these things move quickly because, you know, I've also seen contracts with the state that, that failed just because of the delay in getting it together. Right. That's why I say this is really important stuff. Mm -hmm. The state's going to do its job. It has to do it in, 
some reasonable period of time or right. people walk away like the guy who was here who said I don't do business with the state ever <laughs> <laughs> don't even ask <laughs> right, right. Yeah. but with your case you have to you have to have these contracts these are for human services and health services and yes. you must do that okay so let's shift gears a little bit Amy and talk about how you generated this whole affair this is not so easy and you're talking about legal documents, so you, you can't really make mistakes here. It has to be right. Right. So from the beginning, you know, how, how did you, how were you able to make this happen with the genie? Okay. So um, we actually had our deputy director, Keith Yamamoto, was the one who really spearheaded hey, this shout project. shout-out to Keith. Yes. <laughs> great guy. Great guy, Keith. Hi, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> he was the, the one who really wanted to get this project moving, as he saw, he's been in the Department of Health for a while, and he's seen a lot of the, um, the problems with the contracting. So he asked us to put together a work group uh, made up of representatives from the staff and basically just gave us a goal. He wanted 90% of new contracts to be done within 60 days of contract award right. and told us, you know, brainstorm, figure out ways Find to do this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we brainstormed different options and we came up with the new um, contract process flow with the dual review, which I mentioned. And then we came up with the idea of contract genie because we really needed a way to make contracts move faster, quicker to generate. Um, and standardized documents. So with the work group, we sat down, we printed out all of those you know, nine forms or so that are included with each contract, and we went line by line saying, what is included on each line for each type of contract? And then we also wrote the questions for the user interface. So what, what is the user gonna see? So it might be a very simple question, like what is the legal name of the provider? And then the answer to that, where is it mapped to on the contract? Because the provider name's actually included in several different forms on the contract. So we did this very long process. We met um, over several months and put this together. We had a few all-day sessions where we sat together and just did this process mapping. Um, Everything's got to click with everything else. Yes. When yes. you put in some information, it's got to go bang to all these different right. parts. Right. And you can't have it go to some but not others. Yes. It's got to be complete. Yeah. Yes. So we put that together, and then we um, hired a local company to write the actual code for the, the local system. Local company? What yes. company was that? The Revelcom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good for you, good for them. Yes. I love to see this. I love to see local companies hired mm -hmm. and succeed in doing things maybe that we're better than other states are, mm -hmm. you know, if we really attend to it. Yeah. Right. So we've been working very closely with them. They did an initial uh, beta product for us. We decided to start with uh, health and human services contracts, which are uh, competitively procured, because that's the type of contract that we use most often in the, de in the Department of Health. And uh, they gave us a beta product. We went through many rounds of beta testing because uh, we really coded this completely from scratch. We had absolutely nothing. So we did you know, mock-ups initially for how we wanted the home page and everything to look, to how we wanted the databases to look. Everything was created um, basically from nothing. So is the text in the code or is it data-driven? You know what I mean when I ask you that? In other words, um, so it says, oh, we've got to put in paragraph SJ67 here. That's what the algorithm calls for, SJ67. Mm -hmm. is, is the language for that paragraph in the code, or is it in a database? And it's, uh, the code calls the database in. Um, to be honest, I'm not exactly okay, sure I, on that I, level I, how it's I coded. I program, that's why I asked oh, Okay, I'm, I'm not a programmer, <laughs> okay. so I just know that the correct paragraph shows up when you answer okay, that okay, question. Right. Either so. way, Matt, you know, it works. Yes. So, <laughs> so All right. after we got the beta product, we did uh, many rounds of testing to fine tune everything. And then we released it to a pilot group within the department. Uh, we got their feedback, and then we were able to release it to a larger group. And now we've actually gone um, department-wide with the system, and we have 73 users. This sounds like yeah. clinical trials. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been a long <laughs> process. That whole thing, um, you know, going through the work group and with the beta product took us about a year. So okay. And how is it working? It's working very well. So yeah. far, all of the feedback I've gotten from the staff has been very positive. They're very happy with it. Uh, it's cut down the time significantly to create a contract. Was the staff involved in, you know, in doing the code and doing the, the, the logic that you described the logic stage at the beginning, um, or, well, did they get involved at any point in the design? The staff in our work group were involved, yes, okay. in putting okay. together all of the logic. And then we also, at the end, once we got the contracts just about completed, we sent them through the administrative services office and the attorney general's office so they could give their final okay on it. And um, once they said everything looked good, then we, we launched the, the okay. product. Okay, so now it's deployed Right. What, throughout all of the contracts in right. the Department of Health? 
Right now it's just for the um, health and human services that are competitively procured, and we're building out the rest of the system to cover all the other contract types as well. We got um, funding from the Office of Information Management and Technology to build the rest of those out. So we're going in phases. Right now we have the rest of the health and human services contracts in the uh, final beta product. We're just uh, waiting to do one or two little tweaks on them, and then they'll be released as well. And then for the uh, goods and services contracts, those are all um, we have all of those in beta development right now, so I'm doing some initial testing. We're hoping those will be done within a few months. So what's the difference between, you know, the human services contract and, say, uh, goods and services contract? Did it's I just repeat myself? <laughs> the, uh, human services and goods and services. Right. So the health and human services are things that are going to be um, direct services, um, like healthcare related services, so things like psychiatric services that I had mentioned earlier. Yeah. And then goods and services are really everything else. So things from construction to um, like security services different that we contracts have. Different contracts altogether. Different yes. questions. The 30 questions have they to be They vary, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So when you first start on Contract Genie, you select the type of contract that you're doing. And then in the background, it pulls in all the correct forms and then all of the questions that you need to answer. Okay, so you have to... But the general idea is the mm -hmm. same. The yes. Contract provisions be different. The questions, you know, mm -hmm. the, the way it's constructed, sequence of provisions be different. But... The, the, the idea, the experience of the um, of the of the uh, employee mm -hmm. uh, sitting behind the screen and watching the browser and filling in, the, that's the same. Yes, yes. The user interface is going to look exactly the same for all the contract types. Okay. So once you know how to do one type of contract, you can do any type yeah. of contract on the system. Okay, we're we're going to take a short break, Amy. Then we're going to come back and talk about training. Okay, and how and how you do that and how well it works and. <laughs> And, uh, and, and whether it proliferates through the whole department. That's Amy morton Sogi. She's the contract coordinator of the State Department of Health, which is actually very advanced in this, um, in, in uh, what we call it generating contracts uh, at the Department of Health here in Hawaii, the State of Health. Really important. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Andrew Howard. I'm an astronomer at the Institute for Astronomy at the University of Hawaii up in Manoa. I'd like to tell you about the annual open house that we're having this year. It is on April 6th, 11 to uh, 4 p.m. It's an all-ages event, kids, grown-ups, even uh, people in between. Everyone is welcome. We have a lot of uh, really fun activities. You get to meet astronomers, look at yourself in an infrared camera, play with Legos, make robots, look at videos. Um, you can even make it. Some of the kids like to make comets out of uh, gravel and, and, uh, and snow. Even adults like to do that, too. You'll be able to look at the sun with a solar camera uh, safely. It's really a great activity. We do this every year um, in April, and I hope uh, to see you this year. Thanks. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I'm the host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about why people should like science, why science is actually fun, how science is a dynamic and vital part of everyone's life, why everyone, every man, woman, and child on the planet should really know science, should love science, should be familiar with science. So it's a great show. People come on here and have interesting conversations with us. They tell us why they do what they do, why they love it, why we should love it too. I hope you'll join us every Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. And of course, you can see it anytime on YouTube. Aloha. Okay, we're, we're back, we're live. We're here with Amy morton Sogi. She's contracted uh, coordinator at the State Department of Health and has worked on this great genie project, which we're talking about now. And we have some photographs um, to show you what the screens look like in the in the genie contract generator program. Okay, why don't you explain that? Uh, you can look at it, okay, okay Amy, and just yes. explain what that screen is all about. Okay, this is the database for the contract genie. Uh, Any time that you work on a contract, it's going to save all of your contract information in the database. It's easily sortable by, um, you know, ASO log number, the service description, or the provider name. So you can go back in and um, pull up any contract that you've already worked on and either um, you know, complete it or generate another copy if you need to or make any edits mm -hmm. to it. Okay. Um, got any more pictures? There's another one. What does that say? Okay, this is the Contract Genie homepage. So each user is given a unique uh, username and logon. So once they log on to it, they get this uh, initial homepage here and allows them to you know, create a new contract or they can pull up a contract in one of the databases. Okay. Whoops, there's a workflow yeah. form. What is that telling us? Oh, that is the new contracts workflow that I had mentioned with the dual review. Okay, so what does it show each step 
of how the contract is generated. Yes, and how it goes through the review process. And that, that would be part of the training, I suppose. Yes. To show yes. people what. So how do you train? You, you bring them into a room with a lot of computers? How do yes, you do that? Yes, that's exactly what we do. We have a training room um, in the basement over at Kino Halle, and I set up training courses. I'll send out uh, emails to all of the staff who need to be trained. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to sign up for a class, and then it's about a two to three hour training course. We go through a lot of this information. Um, I talk to them about the new process flow, and then everybody creates a contract together a test contract so I can make sure everybody knows how to work all the different uh, functionalities of the system. So if you train on one system, say on the, was it human services, health and human services mm -hmm. system, do you think you have to train again on the goods and services system? No. It's all the of the functionalities thing. are exactly the same yeah. for both systems. Good. Good. And do they get it? Um, you know, because sometimes in government, and I saw this at the very beginning of the computer age, you know, uh, state employees didn't want any changes. They, you know, don't make me, don't make me learn anything. I don't want to know anything. I want to do it the old way. You know, so do you get resistance? Actually, um, not really. For the most part, everyone's been really happy with this. I think because the process, it just as far as putting a contract together, is so cumbersome and it takes so long that. Um, it gets really backed up just trying to create the contracts. So anything that can make the process faster, everybody's been re you know, really excited about. There's no other agency in the state right now that has this, am I right? They're all operating on the old system, which is kind of manual, where you shovel a lot of pages together and uh, put it in an envelope and send it out right. to somebody. It takes a long time on both ends before it's actually ready. Um, so what do you think the future is for what you have done here in the genie the genie generator program do you think other agencies will pick it up and start doing the same thing uh not exactly the same thing because you know health is different from mm -hmm. you know labor for example mm -hmm. um but is there a future for that have you heard anything about that anybody talking about that we've actually demoed this system to um the state deputy directors meeting last month i think believe governor Ige was there as well and we've done a number of other demos. The State Procurement Office has seen it, um, Hawaii Tourism Authority, as well as the Office of Information Management and Technology. So there's a lot of interest in taking it statewide. Um, you know, as far as applying this actual system statewide, all of the forms in it are the forms that are included on our Form Central website, which is um, the forms from the Attorney General's Office. So those forms actually are going to be the forms that all state departments would use. So you would just have to tailor it in places where we you know, automatically include Department of Health. You would just replace that and include your department. So the system is already built. Basically, really. yes. You would just yeah. have to tailor it for each department. Now, in, in the future for your program, um, it, it will be online. And when everybody has made their approval, the approval will be, what's the word, in parallel rather than serial. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I'll, and I'll, get, I'll get quickly, maybe even less than 29 mm -hmm. days, I'll get a contract. And I can look at it online also, right? You'll send me a link or something, and I can go look at my contract, and I can, I can sign it, maybe even electronically. They that have that. That would be very and, nice. And, and it's c'est ça, c'est tout. Mm -hmm. It's all done, right? Right. This will be very quick. Save mailing time, even. Mm -hmm. That's what we're, we're trying to work towards right now. Um, yeah. Everything has to be implemented in phases as we do this because the project is so new and still in development and One step at a time. every part of it is a new process so electronic review electronic distribution everything is a really completely new way to address all of these issues so we're trying to ease everybody into it by doing one step at a time and then even releasing the project we're doing um, different divisions at different times because we um, we want to just make sure it's, it's working for everybody first yeah, yeah now if I want to look at the provisions before I ever get into the contract. Suppose I'm one of those guys that wonders whether I should do business with the state. There's, there's people out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to go and I want to see what a contract looks like. I want to see what those provisions are. Maybe you have some provision that I have heard is onerous. Mm -hmm. So I want to go look at that. Can I do that or do I have to wait for the whole thing to be generated first? I believe right now on Form Central that anybody can access oh, that. Good. So that would have all of the um, the general conditions written by the Attorney General. That would office. be good. And then, you know, I know in advance what I'm getting. Right. I'm, I'm not, it's not a big surprise right. when I open it up. It's, oh, my God, what kind of provision is that? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, you know, you can react, but I I think a lot of state state contract forms that, that I've seen are pretty tough. Right. It's like they said, you know, we, we don't practice on the business side of this, we practice on the state side, 
So we want to make it tougher than the business community would ever make it. So we're going to really do a job on it. And, and then the result is it turns out to be really tougher than anybody would ever think. Um, are you mindful of that? Do you, do you realize the impact of that on the business community? I have seen it. I noticed it in the, the number of provisions, you know, that we do have in the contracts. Um, that's not something, unfortunately, that I can address. No, no, Those provisions General. are um, created by the Attorney General's office. And from what I understand, they do have a contracts committee there. And these provisions are going to be applied to all state contracts, not just the Department of Health. So yeah. that would be something that would have to be addressed in their office. You know, this guy by the name of Harry Weinberg years ago, big real estate magnate, you know, and he, came, he went to his lawyer and he said, uh, write me a lease that's fair. Both sides. I want mm -hmm. it to be fair. I don't want it to be favoring me or the, the tenant, but mm -hmm. fair. And the lawyer did that. He wrote a contract that was fair. And then Harry would give the contract to prospective tenants, you know, and they would come back and say, well, can we change this paragraph or that paragraph? Mm -hmm. And Harry said, what do you mean? The lease is fair. I told my lawyer to write a fair lease. Mm -hmm. This is fair. I'm not changing one word of it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you start out with fair, you get a better reaction than if you start out with too tough. That's, right. that's my view of it. But now, you know, what this suggests to me, Amy, and it's really important, I mean, and you as a lawyer, you know, who has plenty of contact with the business community, mm -hmm. directly or indirectly, um, can speak to this, is that, you know, this kind of document modeling, um, I think there was a period of time in the late 80s, early 90s, when there were several firms out there, I mean, software companies, building this kind of modeling software right. for, for law firms. I'm not sure exactly what the status of that is today, but I don't think that's as popular as it used to mm -hmm. be. Um, and I wonder your thoughts about whether you are actually pioneering, not only for the state, but for the, the entire practice of contracts. Mm -hmm. I mean, there must be other places where this exact technology would work just as well. If I'm a landlord, for example, uh, like Harry Weinberg I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, and I want to write a fair lease, and I have my 30 questions, and I answer the questions, and a lease pops out for this tenant, this space, you know, in mm -hmm. about a minute, I'm way ahead, and the tenant's way ahead, mm -hmm. and the economy's way ahead, mm -hmm. and everybody is a happy camper. I mean. Your, tech, your technology could have a salient effect in, in, in the business side of things, too, don't you think? I hope so. I hope that what we're doing can be applied, you know, across the board to other departments as well as to um, the business world. As far as some of those other contract um, software types that you mentioned, I haven't really worked directly with those too much, so I'm not sure if what we're doing is really similar to what they're doing or something that's very different, but we're really excited about what we created, so I'm hoping that it can have broader applications. Yeah, as well. I'm getting excited about it, too. <laughs> so one, one last question, that is, where is it going to go from here? I mean, obviously, you're going to try to make it faster. Mm -hmm. You're going to try to make it easier. You're going to try to shorten the period and, and make it run serial instead of parallel. But mm -hmm. what else do you see? Is there more that you... And you're going to expand it around the whole Department of Health right. and maybe other state agencies. Yeah. I mean, if you succeed brilliantly in this, which it sounds like you are, then I can see another agency calling, calling up your boss, Dr. <laughs> Pressler, for example, and saying, you know, can we borrow Amy for a little while? <laughs> we'd, like, we'd like her to show us how to do it in the other kind. But what's going to happen? I mean, you got a feeling about how this is going to move going forward? I'm not exactly sure yet what um, direction we're going to take moving forward with this. You know, after, there's still a lot to implement with the new uh, the contract models and then you know moving forward with the, um, the new process. There has been a lot of interest, as I said, from the other state departments, but what that rollout would look like, you know, I'm not sure if we would do it as more of a centralized system or that each department would kind of get their own version of Contract Genie and tailor it themselves. Um, that's something that's still you know, kind of being decided. Yeah, that's an important question, isn't mm -hmm. it? Because when Sonny Bagwalia was coming in, he was talking about a statewide system, right. all departments, and uh, do you have any preliminary inclinations on that? Should it be distributed department by department? Or should it be some one great big universal contract genie? What do you think? My personal opinion, which is possibly not um, where it's going to go, I'm, not, I'm really not sure, uh, is that it would make the most sense to be a centralized system. Oh, because, okay. um, you know, as I said, the forms are all the same. And a lot of the, um, the maintenance that we do on the system is really going to apply across the board. 
So as we work on this, this is really version like 1.0 of what we're doing. And there are a lot of patches that we do on the system. And if each state department has their own, I'm not sure if they're going to you know, put the same patch on that I put on, even though what I'm doing is probably going to be applicable to them yeah. as well. Yeah. And so I think it would make more sense to do it as a, a centralized place. And so maybe the first question that you're going to answer is, what department are you with? So it would know what to autofill yeah. on that. But since the forms are the same, it, it might be very difficult. And you'd also then have to have somebody in each department who's knowledgeable enough in the software that knows every time you have to make an update. So every time you change the director, you have to change the director's name in the software. Even something small like that, you have to commun that, communicate that to the programmers, make sure it's been um, you know, correctly yeah. applied to the system. And I'm, I'm not sure how that would work with each department getting their own um, yeah. specialist to Yeah, oh, to I, I sure agree program. with that. That would be the modern view, I think, mm -hmm. to try to jump specialize, I'd rather uh, generalize it and centralize it. Yeah. And that was what Neil Abercrombie talked about, and that was what uh, Sonny Baglalia was talking about, for sure. You're right there at the cusp of it, though. That's what it sounds like. Amy Morton, Amy Morton Sogi, uh, contract coordinator at the State Department of Health, doing great work in the generating, getting, generating contracts at the Department of Health, and soon other places, too, I think. They're all going to emulate you, Amy here in Hawaii, the state of health. Thank you so much for coming down. Thank you for having me. <laughs>